I have come to the really I have come to the realization that uh, we are not ready for socialism as a country. We are nope. We are definitely not ready for it. And uh, I've come to that realization because of some people's reactions to the minor student debt relief of ten thousand uh, dollars that the Biden administration um, passed last week, and um, specifically the way that. Um, videos I've put out have sort of grabbed the the algorithm and a lot of folks who don't usually follow me don't really know what I'm about don't really know that like I have basic empathy um are like no this is gross I paid off all my student loans also like someone pay my mortgage like does that mean you're a homeowner good for you um but I've been floored by the amount of comments that are anecdotal to be fair because actually, statistically, the majority of Americans do support this student debt relief. But I've been floored by the amount of comments that are just so incredibly um, selfish and angry and uh, that that some folks would get any amount of student debt relief. Again, the average student debt that people hold in this country is almost $30,000. And it goes way up when you're talking about black and brown Americans and people who took out mega loans, right? Um, and it, The Intercept apparently is coming out with an incredible documentary specifically about black women and how they've been very much targeted and have like exorbitant and disproportionate amount of student debt, you know, in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. So like, but let's just leave aside the sort of, you know, um, the ways that we can fall into like these pitfalls of like semi-racist tropes. But, but like, I am, I can't believe that there's generally not a sense, especially coming out of a pandemic where we all died, almost died, or like know someone who's definitely died realize that no matter how rich we are, we are not safe from this virus, realize that maybe we need to work together and maybe we, you know, should invest in something called a society, you know, and like public health might be an important thing. And, you know, hey, maybe the government does use our money for good, that that goodwill has worn off. If we ever even captured it, like lightning in a bottle, it's worn off and we are back to this Nah, me, I, me, mine, I've paid everything off, I'm amazing, I'm moving on, fuck you and your student debt for, you know, whatever degree that you got. Um, mind you, many people with student debt are teachers, are doctors, are dentists, are also, like, finance people, I mean, people who have, like, MBAs. Like, this isn't just folks... And we'll get into this, like myself, you know, who studied post-colonial feminist theory, because I did. Um, I don't have student debt, actually. I'm very fucking lucky. But I'm not blaming other people for not having a mom who worked very hard and was able to, like, put her through college. Do you know what I'm saying? And I'm not making this point very well. But I think Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez made this point incredibly well on her Instagram uh, page, saying, I've said it before and I'll say it again, not every program has to be for everybody. People with apartments pay for first-time homeowner benefits. Young people pay for Medicare for our seniors. People who take public transit pay for car infrastructure. Maybe student loan forgiveness doesn't impact you. That doesn't make it bad. I'm sure there are certainly other things that student loan borrowers and taxes pay for. We can do good things and reject the scarcity mindset that says that doing something good for someone else comes at the cost for ourselves. An example, if a person is blessed enough to be in a position to have paid off their loans, maybe they have a home now and benefited for first-time home homeowner programs that people crushed by student loans help subsidize when they aren't able to buy a home because of student debt. It all comes around. It's okay. We can support things we don't directly benefit from. Yeah, it is beneficial to have good schools generally in your neighborhood, even if you don't have kids that go to school, right? I mean, and again, this is like this, we have this hyper individualistic, um, pull yourself up by the bootstraps, build a giant fence around my perfect fucking home mentality in this country when that will not save us. 
We cannot just live our lives like that. And AOC continues on by talking about the climate crisis and saying, this is something like the pandemic, which honestly was a dry run. I mean, a, a very mucusy run for what ultimately is the biggest crisis of our lifetimes, which is the climate crisis and how we, no one is safe from that. And motherfuckers have not figured out a way to get to Mars yet. You know, Elysium doesn't exist. I don't know. Is Peter Thiel's floating island? How's that doing? I know it's a tax haven. Is it? Can it, all the Richies get on board? And what I'm talking about, finally, and I know I have to move on, is it's not even billionaires who are complaining. It's people who make like a couple hundred grand a year, homeowners. And and I, I, how many like times do you got to look at the tax rates for people who make like, let's say half a mil, people who make half a million dollars a year are paying a fair share of taxes. And yet they identify in their brains with fucking Bezos and Musk and all these tax dodging billionaires more than they identify with the person that's dropping off their Uber Eats order. When in actuality, they're economically much closer to being an Uber Eats delivery driver, right? Or, heaven forbid, someone who lost their home and is now unhoused. You're much closer to being that than you ever will be to being a billionaire. And you are paying way more in taxes than that motherfucker. So, it, again, it's not only the scarcity mindset, the hyper-individualism of American culture, but it's this bizarre notion that we're all going to be billionaires one day. And guess what? You're fucking not. So when, when are we going to be ready to collective, to think of our country collectively, right? When are we going to be ready to understand that we have money for war and fucking socialism for corporations, endless money, because we think wrongly that's going to trickle down to us and it never does. When it comes to having solidarity for working people, for students, for like just the, not even the ability to make more money, just like, I don't know, going to college, enriching your life, learning about what democracies actually do, you know, suddenly we have no more empathy. And that's sad to me. Of course, everyone who listens to the show is perfect and wonderful and none of y'all had that thought, but it's been weird to watch. What's going on, Frantifa? If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel right now. Hit that button. And also, you can become a patron and support the show every single week. Get access to bonus episodes and exclusive merchandise. Patreon.com slash Bituation Room. Do it.